because I had heard the stories where, you know, supposedly Pat would call Sean's room all night long or knock on his door trying to get him to concede or whatever. Um, so my very first trip in the WWF was I was brought to the building by myself. I was dropped off there and all I was there was just to watch understand to see how they did TVs and how the WWF did their operation. Well, I ended up riding with, uh, back to the room that night with Pat, Vince, JJ, and, and uh, Howard Finkel. And worked out with Vince that day. He had me picked up in a limo with him. We went to the gym, worked out, went back to his room, took a shower, and went to the building. Well, you know, we're all now having dinner, and you know, Vince goes to the bathroom, and I think Vince is sitting across from me and Pat's sitting over, and Pat leans over me and says, what an ass on that guy. I was thinking, oh God, you know, and then he goes, her dog had a really good workout today. He said, I said, yeah, Pat, it was just a workout, you know. So that was a little awkward there. So we get to the hotel. This is Canada when the lightning is going on. He says, hey, you want to come to our balcony and watch lightning tonight? I went, no, I don't want to watch lightning tonight. So he grabs me at the counter and says, I got the big son of a bitch in the waist up. So I you know, <laughs> really went around. I was like a real shoot, you know. Uh, and, I, and I don't know ch chain wrestling. I really don't. But I learned it real quick. So I put my arm in and got around him and said, no, you don't have me either. You know, I said, I'm going to my room. And I really was scared that night. And I don't think they were walking by my room, but I had convinced myself of that. Yeah. You know, but, you know, and again, it could have been real. It could just have been real. It probably was. But again, it was like, no, I don't want to watch lightning with you tonight. You know, I've often talked about the story of Jim Powers. Uh, you know, Jim, really good guy. Same thing. Good looking guy. Great build. Very athletic. Uh, we were traveling together and working out together and we were supposed to have been way to TV taping and then the next morning we're going to get up early and go to the gym. Uh, I came downstairs waiting for him and didn't show up for breakfast. I went and called his room and they said he's checked out. I'm like, what do you mean he's checked out? I thought about like, like another room or something because we were in the middle of a tour. And uh, they said, no, he's checked out. And I, I tried calling. This is before cell phones. This is 1990. So I, it was several months later he finally and he would, never saw him again on the road. And a couple months later, we connected up and, t and talked, and he told me. And you know, at the time, I had no way to to corroborate the story other than what he was telling me. I didn't know him to be a bullshitter. He said that after the taping that night, I think they were getting ready to put the belts on him, uh, Roma, as the the stallions. And he got a phone call. He said around midnight. I can remember it was the 11th floor. He said that he got a phone call around midnight with a voice whispering, said that uh, if you like your spot and you value, want to keep it, go up to the 11th floor room 11 whatever that the door would be open and lights turned out said go and lay on the bed someone will come in and service you well he figured it was a rib and just hung the phone up and went to bed that early the next morning gets a phone call and was sent home and, and that was the last time he worked for them you know so you know again i can't corroborate the story other than that's what jim told me you know, there were a lot of strange things like that that went on up there and just because you mentioned jim powers there's always been the rumor about pat patterson and jim powers did you ever you hear anything about that? He, you know, because Jimmy told me, we, me and Jimmy are real good friends. Um, but when Jimmy was telling me one time, he was like, Marty, damn it. He goes, Pat Patterson, he offered me. He said, all I got to do, and, and I love you, Pat. Sorry to tell the story. You know, it's it's true. We've already talked about it. Um, and I do love Pat. Not like that, but I, I do love Pat. But, um. He, he, I guess he wanted uh, Jim to come to a hotel room, and and just. Get <laughs> oh, you know, I say it right. Yeah, hang out. Hang out. yeah. Hang out. Well, yeah. Apparently, asked Sid to go watch lightning uh, on the balcony at his hotel room. Once. That's what <laughs> Sid did in a flat. I, I mean, but but, but uh, I guess I guess Pat was going to honk on Bobo. He, that's all he did. Jimmy didn't even have to be a pitcher or a catcher. He, he just get you go out there and this out. You get <laughs> <laughs> but but so Jimmy, you know, he didn't go for it. And then you know he he worked us out. He you know he was a, a little great you know, working out and shit. And he worked hard and he he was a good worker. And he's telling me one time he was we we're riding we we're making a trip. He goes and he was just kidding, but it's still funny. He goes. God damn, Marty, you know what, man? If I had that decision to make again, <laughs> all I had to do was lay there. <laughs> wow, there were so, so many rumors, bad and different boys. It's, it's, 
it's a you can't even really go to the end of that story because yeah. you don't know what happened you know and if the powers just, was one of the ones that was always in the mix there was a rumor uh, right? yeah he was trying to get a push from yeah. the back i guess <laughs> <laughs> Pat Patterson comes up to me and he tells me, oh, sit down, let's talk, let's talk. And I guess you can call me a little bit of a hothead. They had the eight foot table sitting up against the wall, long ways, and he's sitting his back up against the wall. And I was standing on the side of the table. And he again builds it, oh, you know, it's good to have you here. It's a family business. You're gonna make a lot of money, a little French Canadian. You're gonna make a lot of money and, oh, we'll give you a gimmick and, oh, you'll be worldwide famous. You'll make a lot of money and kept on and kept on and kept on. He said, and besides that, he'll go both ways. And when he said that, I just kicked him off the table. I said, I, he said, no, 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 I'm talking bad guy or good guy. what do you think I meant? And I've seen, I've been at hotels with Everybody checking in and he'd be in the back and somebody up front, I'm not mentioning names, he'd say, uh, two beds and Pat would be hollering from the back, one bed will be fine. And the guy put his head down and said, one bed. And it's just like, that was right before all of this happened. And I was like, I'm out of this. this. And the next day... Uh, what was his reaction when you kicked the table? He was just panicked. Oh, no, he, he just stood up like, oh no, yeah. what do you think I meant? I was talking yeah. bad guy or good guy. Right. You know, he was, everybody knows he was married to Louis, a guy, yeah. you know, so it wasn't strange. And when he told me that, it's like, like I said, maybe I'm a little bit of a hothead, but I didn't appreciate that at all. And that was the end of the conversation. Steve Lombardi, that was his age. I heard him talk about it, but Steve said he never bothered me. And I don't believe that. That's right, because Steve Lombardi was kimchi, wasn't he? Yes. What did you think about the rumors that, that Lombardi had his job so long because of his relationship, I guess, with Patterson? Yeah, well, I knew that. I knew that from the beginning, that he could... He had been there for many, many years. And uh, he, 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 I, I knew he could stay long as he wanted to because of Pat Patterson. Do you think that was just rumor that they were more than just friends or do you think there's actually something to that? No, I think it's something to it. I don't believe it was just rumors because I saw Pat Patterson one time. We was all at the hotel and I'm standing up there so uh, Steve Lombardi get my room because I tried to take care of my gimmick. And uh, then he said, and then I want one for me, a singer room. Pat Patterson said, no, a king. And they both stayed in the room together. Yeah. So it, it was something to it. You know, oh, if Jim Powers is getting a push, must be because, uh, look at him, he's got a good body. Pat's probably, I mean, you know, I heard the stories too. Uh, Steve Lombardi, I heard the stories too. Uh, you know, I have no, I know as much as anybody else, but uh, I don't know. I don't know. You know, who knows? But it was kind of an uncomfortable uh, time, that kind of stuff being talked about. But um, I never saw it with my own eyes, but you know, the guys would say what they saw. And, I, you know, that's the eyes I'd be hearing through and looking through, you know. That you don't I, fit the profile either, though. No, no, no. <laughs> well, I, I asked Pat one time, I said, Pat, I said, to me and Doug, and we were laughing, we were all up laughing, all they were all drinking one time at Legend's house. I said, Pat, you know, I said, I said, Jim and I were talking, and Doug hadn't said a word about this, this is from my brain. I said, they were all had, sitting around having beers and shots of stuff and, and Gene Oakley. I said, Doug and I always wondered, all the years you've known me and him, how come you never, how come you never took a shot at me and Jimmy? He said, oh, are you kidding? You two are my type. Thank you for watching the Hannibal TV. Please like this video if you enjoyed it and click the subscribe button to not miss any of our latest shoot interviews, match videos, or news updates. Support us on Patreon.com for $1.99 a month to watch our full shoot interviews ad-free 
and help our channel grow. Follow us on Twitter at The Hannibal TV for instant updates.